this morning. How many of you looked at the title of the sermon this morning? It's in your bulletin. And just, it's a question that we need to ask ourselves, isn't it? Not how run into people all the time. I don't have to go to church. I worship God wherever I am. I am. You all ever heard that? Many, many times. So how do we, what's our rebuttal? How do we, how do we respond to this? Why do we go to church? How come? I don't get ahead of me. Don't steal my whole thunder. I'm sorry. But yes, that is part of it. Why do we come? You know, a lot of people come. You know, and I, I did for years because Mama made me. Amen. I was a drug baby. Mama drug me to church on Sunday morning. She drug me to church on Sunday night. She drug me to church on Wednesday night. Okay, amen. Anybody amen. else on it? Okay. Amen. And, you know, if I didn't go, I knew it was harmful to my health. Not because God was going to get me, but because Daddy or Mama was going to get me if I didn't go. Okay. So why do we go to church and I, believe it or not, as I was studying and looking, somebody put some brand new verses in my Bible I've never seen. They, they brand new in there. Never been there before. I found some scripture. I, I don't know how many times I've read through the Bible and I, I never noticed them before. I'm sure they were always there. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? So God will continue to reveal stuff to you. But we're going to begin in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 13 and 15, is where we're going to start this morning. And uh, we'll read that, and that kind of begins our reasoning and our purpose for having church. But in general, Deuteronomy now, once again, I had to I had to break in the pages. I don't spend a lot of time in Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Numbers, okay? But I did finally find it. But it says, uh, Six days you shall labor. Well, let's start at 12. Excuse me. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you so that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out of there by a mighty hand by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Our most gracious God in heaven. Father God, we do come this morning to honor you and to respect you and to be obedient to you that we observe a day of Sabbath, a day of rest, a day of worship to you, a day that is holy to you. And Father God, God, as we go through our scriptures this morning, I, I ask you to open my eyes and my heart and give me the words to say that I may clarify to each one that's here today your intentions in having a holy day of rest. I ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 The first thing, the first reason that we should be at church is because God commanded. Amen. And that should be enough of a reason, right? Amen. But God commanded that we have a day of rest. Now, let's stop and go. Brady, you have to work on Sundays, don't you? Does that mean that you're being disobedient to God? Okay. God did not make a calendar. Man made a calendar to try to keep up with God. Okay? But our bodies need rest, don't they? We can only go so far, so fast, so long, and we give out. We get exhausted. God knew that a day of rest was good for us. And how did he know that? Well, if you look back in Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, listen, you got it? You got a Bible with you? Who's got the Bible? Genesis 2. 
so. Okay, you understand the difference? He took nothing and made something. You want to talk about difficult work? He had, I mean, he had to think it out, plan it out, forethought. I mean, everything in all of his physical and every bit of his being went into creating the universe, and then he rested. He looked upon his work. That gives us insight as to what we are to do on this holy day. Because he said it is a holy day. He sanctified this day and made it holy. What are we supposed to do? We are to reflect upon what we did. Now it says God finished all his work. How many of y'all have finished everything that y'all supposed to have done this week? Oh, really? Are you sure? Okay. Miss Avery says she has. Okay. <laughs> now, all right. Now, you're a kid. You ain't never done. Okay, I promise you. You got something else. You, you got more grief you can cause mom. I promise you. Okay? But he, he sets the example of resting and stopping and looking back and reflecting upon the work that he did. And he said, what I have done is good. Now, me and you, we can look back and well, some of what we have done is good and some of what we have done we probably shouldn't order have done and some of what we did needs to be done over again. Right? And we can look forward to the next week and begin thinking about those things. But on the seventh day, we need to rest. Our bodies need to refuel and recharge and regenerate. So it's, it's good for us physically. It's good for us mentally to stop and slow down and think about what we've done and where we need to go so that we can focus ourselves. If not, we're just, yeah, you're getting that where you're just going and you really don't have any idea why, and you don't have any idea where you're headed, you're just going. You ever, you ever get that way? You're so busy and so swamped and so covered up, you just, you just go. And you really don't know your purpose and your reason, you're just doing. And we need to stop and pause and reflect. Of, well, maybe those are some things I don't need to be doing anymore, and I can be doing these things. God is doing you a favor by giving 
it left the wives out of here, but I don't think that was intentional. But it says, I'm not to work. My slaves are not to work. My children are not to work. My servants are not to work. Even the guy that's visiting with me is not to work so that the ones that do the cooking ain't supposed to have to work. As far as I, I'm supposed to see that everyone that I have some jurisdiction over enjoys a rest and learns to relax, learns to take time in God. And the middle part of this is we were slaves. We were slaves to sin, were we not? Yeah. And when God gives us that day of rest, he's telling us you're no longer a slave to your work. You're no longer a slave to the finances. You're no longer a slave to that social status that comes with having all of the stuff that you think you want to have. You're not to be enslaved to that. Because God has set us free. And on that day we can take and relax and enjoy the freedom that, you know, all of those things, God's in charge of those things. God's going to relax and enjoy those things. He's going to provide those things for me. Right? God will take care of those things. My desires for a lot of that stuff is going to go away when I begin to honor God. So not only does he command us to rest, but then he makes it a holy day. All right? And in Isaiah, this is the scriptures that I've never run across before until just the other day. Isaiah chapter 58, verses 13 and 14. Like I said, I, I was looking for Isaiah 53, and you know how you thumb it, and I flipped over, and I'm, I knew I was getting close, and I looked down, and I'm like, really? I did not know that was it. And I, I read through it several times. I still don't ever remember seeing this before in my life. But it's Isaiah chapter 58, verses 13 and 14. If, because of the Sabbath, you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and honor it, desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure, and speaking your own word. Then you will take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. And I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So God says this day is holy. What is holy nowadays? I mean, is anything holy? Is anything sacred anymore? You know, when I was in school, and I know that's been a long time ago, okay? I think me and Noah was in the same school together, okay? Long time ago, before there was dirt on the ground, okay? Long time ago, schools did not schedule anything on Wednesday evenings, and they did not schedule anything on Sundays. Why? Because families were supposed to be in church. And families were going to be in church. And we did not do anything on those days. Now, when we look at it today, what goes on today? I mean, every day of the week, there is something scheduled somewhere. I mean, we got so much stuff going on nowadays that we cannot keep it all straight. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, stuff being a grandparent, trying to keep all the schedules of all my grandkids. Whew! You know. I mean, there's, there's stuff constantly. Every day of the week, there is no day that is sacred. There is no time that is holy. There is no time. We, we're dragging, we're drawing, we're trying to pull people away from God for everything that, that we can. The world is pulling us away from God from remembering this holy day, this day of rest. Because, okay, if we, if we work Monday through Friday, then we take Saturday and Sunday and we go to a tennis tournament and we're in tennis all day long, every day, and we don't get in until 10, 30, 11 o'clock on Sunday night so that we can get up and get back to school on Monday morning and head back to the office on Monday morning and we can go work all day. When did we rest? When did we pause and reflect upon how beautiful and wonderful God was? But he promises us, he gives us a promise. If we will remember that his Sabbath is holy. If we will call it honorable, if we will resist and desist, stop ourselves, in other words, from doing the things that we want to do, the activities that we 
things and the things that we say. I like it. Speaking your own words, it says. If we will put all of that aside to honor God and make his day holy and to make his day honorable, he gives us a promise. Number one, then we will delight in the Lord. We will understand God better. We will appreciate God better. We will see what God is doing in our lives. And I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. He's going to provide for us. He is going to bless us if we remember to honor him on his day. So the day, the, our Sabbath, is to be a holy day, a sacred day, a consecrated day where we ponder and think about and delight in God and the wonderful blessings that he has given us. And the third thing that we need to do, with this we're going over into the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, we need each other. Okay? And this is pretty much a whole sermon by itself, but we're not going to do that because I'm watch, I am watching the clock. Okay, But it says, in, in beginning in verse 24, And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. We are to come to church because we need each other. We need to bring in an attitude of there's somebody there that I need to bless, somebody there that I need to encourage, somebody there that I need to demonstrate love to, whether it be from an encouraging word, oh, that's such a beautiful dress, left ma'am, or oh, I heard what you did this week at school, or you know, I need to encourage one another. I need to. I don't come to church for what I'm going to get, okay? I'm supposed to be here for what I can give to those who God sends here. You know, as a pastor, I have to worry about my words being encouraging, that my attitudes and my actions demonstrate love and consideration to each and every one of you. It's not about what I'm going to get out of this. It's about what I'm going to give to each one of you, all right? But now then, on the other hand, if I am giving Billy encouragement and I'm in strengthening Billy and I'm giving him a pat on the back and Justin walks by and says, hey brother, appreciate that phone call this past week. Well, guess what? All of a sudden I'm, I feel better. I feel encouraged. I feel stimulated. I feel loved. And so I get something, not because I expected to get something, but because I came to give. Amen. And when I come to give to each one of you, Who's that? Brothers, if someone is 
make sense? How can Miss Bonnie restore me? How can she tell me when I've messed up? How can Miss Mary tell me that I'm preaching terrible if, if we're not here to talk to one another, right? You need to be here to hear me preach bad so that you'll know I'm preaching bad so you can straighten me out, right? Yeah, and you will, won't you? <laughs> okay, but on the other hand, how can she encourage me and tell me what a great sermon I've done if she's not here to hear my sermon? Amen. How can she tell Alyssa how much she loves her and misses her if Alyssa's not here to tell or if Mary's not here to tell? Or Kenny, how can I how can I encourage him during the day? How can I lift him up? Well, Linda, you straighten him out pretty regularly. We understand that. But, you know, I, I do my part. If we don't interact with one another, we need one another. We need fellowship with one another. We need our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. God commanded us to observe a day and to keep it holy unto him for our benefit. restore one another, to carry one another's burdens. If we gather together, how will I know? How will I know that Billy's got a problem if Billy don't share it with me? How can I help him carry his burden if he stays at home by himself? Tell me your burden, brother, and let us all carry it. You know, I, I did learn a little bit of math in high school, not much, but a little bit. You know, if you take that weight and you spread it out over a great big area, it's not very heavy on anything. But if you put it all in one little spot, it will collapse Amen. underneath. Okay? And so Billy needs to share his burden with me. And I need to come share it with JL and to Kenny and to Kelsey here. And we can all help carry that burden and none of us get squashed down. But if Billy's trying to carry it all by himself, he gets power out. other. Amen. We help carry Amen. each other's burdens. Amen. And we cannot do it if we don't come together and join one another in fellowship. If we don't join one another in worship, if we don't join one another in prayer and love and concern. Mm -hmm. We need one another. Amen. Miss Amy needs me. I need Amen. Miss Amy. Amen. Okay? I need your Amen. smiling face. Mm -hmm. I need Miss Betty back there. Clyde, Amen. never mind. <laughs> share it with us. And this, let this church help you carry that burden and show you how you can make it. Amen. Maybe things just ain't been going good in your life. Share that burden and let this church help you carry that burden. Got a problem. You need help working it out. Bring it to this church. Bring it to God. Amen. Whatever's going on in your This day that we get together in your presence, oh God. The day that you have set aside and made holy and sacred to you. Father God.